Ya Allah mulak. Allah mulak. Ya Allah mulak. Ya mi. Lakis. Ya Allah gadol. Makari antios. Ya Allah ya donai. Ya Allah ya lohim. Kurios tios panta kreta. Kurios tios pistos. Elda et ehova. Yel yamuna yehova. Ibas liyan kurios. O tios. O panta kreta. Basilios basilion kai kurios kurion. Yehova dabar halal. Elohim dabar halal. Yehova Elohim. Gadol gadol geburra. El Elohim Israel. Isus Christos. Ton Christon is in ton Kurion. Kurion ni Mahagion Pantacreta. Gadol Gadol Gibra. Ehova Ishmal Kam. Ehova Shamma. El Nakum Yehova. El Nakum Yapa. Natsak Israel. La Sheker. Gava Gava. Triembos Yehova. Jesus Christos, Pantacreta, Gadol Gadol, Gibra. Zoan Logan Ogar Tautios, Dulas, Desmias, Despotes, Dikayasune, and Jesus Christos. Kurion, Kurion, Kurion. Hagion, Hagion, Hagion. Numa, Pantacreta, Gadol Gadol, Gibra. Mora Rosh Nasa Elohim Elohim Illayla Eshalut Yehova Malak Yehova Malak Olam Olam At Yehova Elohenu Yehova Ekat Gadol Gadol Gebura Derek Emunabakar Mishfat Shava The Megalogay of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself upward unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkeno, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Realizing on this earth there is no more important work for us than to know in whose image and superscription we have been made on this earth. Realizing that we have to be blinded for the commandments of the word of Lord God and nothing else is been needed for us to be a replacement of these commandments of the word of Lord God for us. So dear brethren, use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound and let's come back and continue after this prayer what God the Father has prepared and kept for us. On today's date in Eternity Pass to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. We shall continue after this prayer. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming unto the grace of the Lord to learn thy truth. What else do we want on this earth, O Lord, than to day by day truly enjoy and to be blinded in your word, as Psalm is said in Psalms 119 in verse number 16. So, Father, being blinded in your words, having this great joy to know 
we have the image and superscription of you upon us written in eternity past, so that we could conform to the image wherewith you have called us, and writing your word upon our forehead or upon our mind, in our inner mind, we could all the time be your word to these people who are dying and perishing, not knowing the real essence of this value of life to be well prepared to meet you in heaven. So, Father, the things which are prepared and kept for us on today's day to eternity pass to the praise of your glory. We pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to reveal us the things that which has been given for today's day to eternity past. So, Father, being grateful and thankful for this, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would enlighten and challenge us by the message which are prepared and kept for us on today's day. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. When Christ our Lord our God says in Matthew chapter 22, in verse number 20, he said, Whose is the image and who is having that superscription or inscription of you in it? So the word image we read E I Khan. It is nothing but into the image of God into which the true Christians are transformed. And then it is also to meet the holy and the blessed state of mind which Christ our Lord our God possesses. So what is this superscription then? The superscription is epigraphe. You know, as I said in Isaiah chapter 49, emphasizing about this point in verse number 16, he said long back, stating that, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. The word graven is called shakak. That meant to say engraved, inscribe. And the word inscribe over here meant to say, no matter what, the wall of fortification that the world may rise against you or against the privilege to confirm to the image of Christ, all those walls from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, it is I who have been absolutely erased if you could realize whose image you are and whose subscription or inscription you have upon your mind. So dear brethren, he said in this great verse of Isaiah 49, emphasizing, I have engraved thee upon the palms of my hand. The word hand is very, very important. It is called cap, and the word cap over here meant to say, as a scribe, when you open up your mouth in becoming the disciples of the word of Lord God. That's the mouth. That's the scribe. And then he said, Thy walls are continually before me. The word walls is nothing but your brethren as protection or the thing pertaining to your blood and wall of fortification. They are continually before me. The word continually meant to say, they are all the time perpetually. They are all the time. Every thought in your blood is before me. So, here the superscription, if you could look, we have been called to be having day by day the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. That's what you know the psalmist said, you know, here in Psalms 119 in verse number 16. He said, emphasizing the point that your word as it has been given for us, I will delight. You know, the word delight may not give us that meaning, but the Hebrew word delight is sha'a. The word sha'a for the strong code number 8173 meant to say to be smeared over or to say cover over or to say blinded. So he says blinded over. So this is what it is, if you would realize that whose subscription or superscription or inscription you are, you will really be blinded over. 
the word blinded over if you could look in the pictographical representation meant to say you have been taking your thought process and your viewpoint of life simply as blindly as bluntly to say the word of god you are not having any other thing because you know the things pertaining to the word of lord god are so great and unique if you would simply obey them if you would simply follow them if you would simply apply them to your life for example daily carry your cross and follow my christ seven times a day praise the lord day and night meditate upon bible doctrine if you would love me keep my commandments he said you are my real friends if you would obey my commandments whatsoever i have told you to do if you would simply like the way how we have in the bible the illustration for us including that ravenous crow which gave food to elijah simply for 3 years without even having to think what the work of the lord of a god was just it did it so in simple words dear brother if you would simply follow what a great blessing you have that's the point over here so if you would simply blindly by not giving place for any other thing if you would simply blindly follow them the really dear brother when you'll be having such sort of a life which you cannot be even thinking of if you would simply blindly follow them every day morning wake up and do the will of lord god the father like the thing pertaining to your physical breath as you've been breathing more than that if you would look to do what is the will of lord god the father simply it's a marvelous blessings for you that's what he said in psalms 14 verse number 8 Lo, here, O Lord, I am to do Thy will. It has been written in the volume of Thy book long back. Volume of Thy book long back. It has been written that we are here to do Thy will. Simply, just follow. You know why? Because Job chapter thirty-seven, in verse number five, we have this beautiful verse, which particularly he says in Romans chapter eleven. to emphasize the cross reference of that of job 37:5 oh the depth of the riches both the wisdom and knowledge of god how unsearchable are his judgment and his ways passing finding out or his ways past finding out the greek word is a followed by the word ek and then the word is ik iknos iknos meant to say footprint so past finding out so a ek iknos or it meant to say to be comprehended or he says the wisdom the knowledge the unsearchable judgments or his ways are un finding out or they cannot be comprehended That's why he said, "Lord, your commandments have caused me to be blinded. I don't have any other thing, just to be blinded, smeared over, sha'a. My thought process, my viewpoint of life, what your word says, humbly I follow that. Your word says every believer has to transform or conform to the image of Christ. So simply, I come because I have in me your image. I have in me your inscription. Epigraphy followed by the word e icon. I have your word written upon my mind. If a man could wake up. the creator to look rather than worshiping the creation his 99.99% of problems will be easily solved out but what does man do he doesn't come for the solutions he comes for murmurings he doesn't come to look upon the creator to find solutions 
He thinketh he can comprehend this life by making for himself guards with his own hands, hands, legs, eyes, ears, and mouth. Though they have, they cannot walk or lift up their hand or see or smell or talk. He thinketh he can comprehend because now he is a creator. So he thinketh that he has been made of a creator and he has something of his own mind because he has been self-existent. And he goes on to worship himself as creator imaged idols or imagined concepts of necromancy, witchcraft, whatsoever they are. So he said, it is not comprehensible. You cannot comprehend a ignores past finding out. And why it is it is not able to be comprehended? Therefore he said, the natural man, the soulish man, cannot understand the deep things of Bible doctrine. Only the spiritual man can comprehend. Therefore, what does the spiritual man do? First, he believes in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. After believing in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he has only one work to be all the days of this life. In the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. That's what it is. You know, when Apostle John was being considered to be, not John, but John the Baptist, he was considered to be, are you the Messiah or we need to wait for someone? There he said, emphasizing the point that I am not the one because I am baptizing you with water, but the one who cometh after me is mightier than me. And then he said, Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. You know, these words are very, very important because you cannot comprehend these things. As if you are walking now in this life, if you would have your shoes or your sandals, it protects the master's feet wherever the master might have gone. As you can walk in this way of life, you know very well, sometimes you might have even stamped upon the excreta of cow or excreta of human as well. If you were barefoot, you know very well what a sort of a smell it would be for you. So what you would say, the shoes has taken care of that. It protects you from many, many things so that your, 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 your feet or the legs of you should be well protected. So, dear brethren, the shoes play such sort of an important role protecting the feet of the Master. So, here John the Baptist was called to be the voice in the wilderness. And he did not finish his work as well because his head was being beheaded. So he says, I am not worthy, I am not worthy to bear, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. That meant to say what complete protection for the work of Lord God. You know, after the death of of John the Baptist, Christ our Lord our God, he goes on to emphasize if you would believe that he is the thing pertaining to the work of El Elisha or Elijah. And he really feels bad that John the Baptist was being beheaded. So here, dear brethren, to understand the things which God the Father has quoted, his ways are very hard to be founded out or to be comprehended. So in John, in Isaiah chapter 40, in verse number 28, he said, Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. The reason why he says that, dear brethren, because he has 
that superscription of image in our lives that simply he said obey my word humbly accept my word be blinded in my word and you know many skepticals would come and say saying that we are been there in the word of god we have been doing this we have been doing that <laughs> and if anyone would ask are you a christian they would say indeed i have always been a christian and then the gospel preached today about god's love and then accepting this love makes you a child of god you know they say no mention of saying that i am a sinner i need of repentance no mention of christ blood or cross or death and resurrection some raised in christian homes have always heard the gospel gone to church done family devotions and were even baptized some those surrounded by these things are the fathers from salvation you know if you could say that old chinese proverb which goes to say you know the fish will be the last thing to discover the water being surrounded by something doesn't mean that one realizes its importance that's what is happening today in our pulpits you're not been blinded by the word of lord god you're just been taking christianity for granted in the sense that you have comprehended lord god but are not realizing like the way how john the baptist could say i'm not worthy to bear to be the shoes of him that's what he said i'm not worthy he hasn't done the work he was been beheaded so dear brethren now he has given the chance for us in the completed can of scripture to understand that we are his image and superscription to understand that we have to grow up in the knowledge of bible doctrine to realize that we have to reach the full wisdom and knowledge of the word of lord god in order to fulfill the pale wonders of his glory so here dear brethren being surrounded by the water the fish will be the last one to realize its importance so being surrounded by something doesn't mean that you have realized its importance you have now ample of the word of lord god but are not realizing the importance you're not able to take up your cross and follow my christ you're not able to become what has been demanded for us to be in the word of lord god so this can also happen to those who have always been surrounded by god's word from birth they have heard it they have read it they have memorized it they have carried bibles to and fro from the church yet all the while its message of salvation eludes them only when the fish is finding itself out of the water does it start to squirm desperately trying to get back into the water for some coming out of the water makes them realize that they were just going through the motions and the life they thought they had they really didn't have so assuming you are saved because you have always been around the word is a grave mistake So let's not preach a counterfeit gospel to spare feelings or fill the church buildings. Let you preach the real thing, the real thing to make them to understand whose image they are, to understand whose inscription they have. And in that, if they don't have the word of Lord God, if they're not conforming to the image of Lord God, then when will they go on to become, in practical way of life, that which the word of Lord God says that His shoes we were not worthy to bear? So, dear brethren, preach the real thing. Give them the life-giving water. which all of them so desperately need so dear brother in hebrews 10:22 he says let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil consciousness and our bodies washed with pure water you know where we are living today we are not living like the true christian in christ our rank our calling So dear brethren he says over here in Job chapter 35 37 in verse number 5 God thundereth marvelously the word thundereth over here meant to say he goes on to give you the word of lord god to renovate your head and your viewpoint of life 
as per the demands of the word of Lord God that should run in your body as blood. So how does he go? He goes on marvelously, meant to say palais. What marvelously? He goes on to open up the mouth of the pastor teachers to preach it, to become disciples. Make up their cross every day, follow my Christ. That's what they love to preach. If they're not preaching that, you think the imagination of their heart is just nothing but dumb dogs which cannot bark. They don't have that spark of discipleship program in them. That's what we read two days back. The congregation is evil. So dear brethren, they murmur. Whenever we go to tell to them, become disciples, grow up into grammatias, they really go to murmur. So he said the same thing over here. If God thundereth marvelously, he wants you all to realize the great church church people, John 1, 11 and 12, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God as disciples of the word of Lord God. He thundereth marvelously. And he expects every believer as a Christian to be as a disciple. That's where you have to first get qualified. Any other thing apart from discipleship program, whatsoever you are coming to be in the weekly ones of the church, monthly ones of the church, yearly ones of the church, you are not at all a disciple. In simple terms, you are not at all a Christian. You may be thinking that you have been surrounded in the water like the fish of the Chinese proverb. The fish will be the last thing to realize that the scarcity of the water can cause the problem. But till that time, being surrounded by such water or such, such false Christendom way of belief will certainly make you to be far away. What is the true Christian? You have been surrounded by such sort of denominational standards. Your parents don't know the burden of discipleship program. Therefore, they don't come to the church. They say they love you, but they don't love you. If they love you, they would make you to come back and learn the word of Lord God. They would purge the revealed consciousness. They would wash thoroughly with the word of the water of the Lord of our God every day. And they would make you also to wash in that. So the ways of Lord God which cannot be found out, which cannot be comprehended, is wisdom, is knowledge. It demands that every believer should be now able to bear the shoes of the Lord. That's what Christ our Lord of God says concerning John the Baptist. No one is greater than John the Baptist, the one to whom the, the one who has been born to the woman, except John the Baptist. No one is greater. But now when he comes now to the church age, he says, even the least believer, least believer is far greater than John the Baptist, because now you have been given the caliber and the capacity to bear his shoes. What is the shoes? You have been called to protect the master's will, the master's feet. Wherever the master wants to go, the shoes will help him. The shoes, that's what he said, gospel. And then he goes on to say, put upon the entire panoply of God, use the only offensive weapon, Lord God, the Holy Ghost, which is nothing but the remata declaration of Bible doctrine, and make the word of Lord God to spread. Therefore he said, go, that's the great commandment, go and make disciples of all the nations. He did not say just stop. He said go. You know, people are not able to realize this great direction to say go. They're just thinking that Matthew 28, beginning with 18 through 20, is just a simple logic. But he said in verse number 19, particularly, go. What is the meaning of go? Carry over. And the Hebrew word halak or yalak, it meant to say, as grammatias, go and make disciples. That's the word go or walking with or event. So what does he do now? He goes on to make disciples. 
and he doesn't have any other work that's what he said go become adherent to follow the direction of the word of lord god which has been given just go therefore he said go therefore and teach the word teach is wrong matthias make a disciple and since you people are not able to understand the importance of this word go you are not able to realize why you should go to make disciples of all the nations so dear brethren he says again and again the great importance of his matchless glory he thundereth marvelously why he wants to open up your mouth to be as a disciple but you know what these people they're trying to do in numbers chapter 14 as we were looking yesterday we have thrice three times murmurings in the english but there if you would look upon the pictographical representation followed by the chords of the word in numbers chapter 14 beginning with words number 26 he said the lord spake unto moses and unto aaron saying how long shall i bear this evil the word evil distorted thinking in their mind and what is the distorted thinking in their mind far from discipleship program they don't look upon the pale wonders or marvelous wonders of his word so that's what he said evil how long shall i bear this evil congregation i had meant to say witness who could fix their eyes to get every thought into captivity for Christ and then what does he say which murmur against me if you're not able to look the marvelous wonders which is opening up your mouth to be discipleship program he says the same thing over here emphasizing the point that these people are murmuring you know why they murmur their vigor and valor is far away from a discipleship program why do they come to church they think they have been surrounded by the word of god they're praying they're doing this they're doing that but they're really not able to understand that they have to go and make disciples they have to realize the image and the superscription that they have in them the thinking of christ it is not just coming to say we are just enjoying to come to the church weekly once we are doing this we are doing that so that we could be well operated we will do this no dear brother every thought every action every deed will be accounted tomorrow to be brought in the judgment seat of Christ said ecclesiastes chapter 12 whatsoever have done whether in secret or in open or good or bad will be brought into the judgment seat of Christ therefore he said fear god and keep his commandments the same thing what we are also telling be blinded smeared over sha'a by the commandments of the word of lord god don't try to look any other thing apart from the commandments of the word of lord god because all other things on this world are absolutely vague and vanity therefore he said let us hear the conclusion what conclusion against any pressure which have gone through this life how you are going to open up your mouth and give an advice to the coming generation that's the point conclusion the word conclusion over here meant to say so up and so what you're going to be the life of your conclusion which you're going to pass down to your children or to your next hearers as as moses was giving in his deuteronomy the conclusion of the word of lord god he said humbly obey if not lord god the father will walk contrary to you so before he could walk contrary to you make him to be with you so that he can go on and devour the enemies like a consuming fire so don't fear saying that these people are tall and great or you know so much of a great discourse what he gives in the book of Deuteronomy don't worry about them don't think about them it is the lord your god which goeth before you the battle belongeth unto the lord of a god he fighteth for you so now he says don't worry about them 
Go ahead and do the willing and doing the will of Lord God the Father when He is with you. He goes for you or to be with you as a consuming fire. He will exterminate them. So that's what he said, the conclusion. He says, Vobe God, Vobe God. Fear and tremble. You people are not able to realize until and unless you think after you die, you will have some time. No, dear brethren, the only time for you to be well prepared to confirm and to have a trembling fear for his mandates is as long as you have breath in your nostrils. After that, either you will be in the presence of Lord God to pass the test so that you could say, Many are called fever chosen. I am in the chosen list. My name has been recorded in the book of life. I will be granted the resurrection body. You know, the next stage of your lives. After you die, first thing you have to be sure, your name has been recorded in the book of life. Because you have been chosen, you have passed the tests, you have passed the trials, you have passed the persecutions, you have passed each and everything which Lord God the Father wanted to examine you. Because in each and everything it is Lord God the Father who endureth forever and he puts to test for you so that you can qualify yourselves into the chariots of God. When once you are into the chariots of God, there is no fear for you for anything else. So how do you get into the chariots of God? As a scribe alone you can get. Apart from that you cannot get into the chariots of God. That's what he said the kingdom of God is all about. Matthew 13, 52. Joined as disciples growing up into grammatias. And if you're not writing the word of Lord God, your brother and take it granted you're not in the chariots of God. So if you're not being there in the chariots of God... You cannot end your trials, persecutions. You don't know the motivation for your life. You don't know the purpose for your life. And when you don't know the purpose for your life, you're not sure. Their name has been recorded in the book of life. You're not sure you're going to get the resurrection body. You're not sure you're going to be in the presence of Lord God the Father. So the only time for you to be well prepared is right now in the church age. So before the conclusion before the end, what you're going to give them. You should be well prepared to know that you are the preacher of righteousness. You are the one like Lot who vexed his soul because of the ungodly deeds, what they were doing, the filthy conversations, what they had. You should be that preacher of righteousness on behalf of you. God the Father is yet granting the grace. And you should be the people where you can come now and tell what is the conclusion of the whole matter, what is the end. So I would say against any pressure, better open up your mouth to be the mouth of the Lord God rather than becoming the imaginations of your own heart. So dear brethren, imaginations of your wicked heart thinking upon your wicked heart, ruling as per the wicked heart, is not what the word of Lord God calls. The conclusion, he says, against all the pressures, the pictographical representation meant to say, no pressures like a thorn. As Apostle Paul says, the thorn I, I asked Lord God, the Father, to remove, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. You know, that thorn kind of a pressure, in the thorn kind of a pressure, every day being so precious for you to go and redeem the time, not to waste your valuable grace of God in functions, in parties, in enjoyments, at the cost of letting go that particular day, not to gather your spiritual manna. If they would ask you, we have a great party, come let's and drink and enjoy. The best thing you should say, I have a better great party than that, what you can think. The party with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to cherish and nourish in his word. Because he loveth his flesh and I am his flesh, I am a part of his body, the church. He cherisheth and nourisheth it with every day in the word of Lord God. I need to go and enjoy that party first. I cannot let go the party of making my end entire body, soul and spirit to be happy. How? Only through the inculcation of 
of Bible doctrine and becoming that word to the people because the great commission of my Lord God is to go and make disciples. So in order to go and make disciples, the very first thing what I ought to do, I have to become his shoes so that he can be put upon his feet and I have to protect it. I have to protect his feet. And today, what is the conclusion of your whole life? Just look, what a valuable grace of Lord God, you're wasting in vanity. You should be in the Lord's business. Cursed is the one who doeth the work of Lord God negligently. After death, what is your life? Have you been recorded your name in the book of life? Have you been really happy to know that you have been given the privilege of resurrection body? I can say that I will get my resurrection body. Can you be in the presence of Lord God the Father? Because you have fought a good fight for the Lord God on this earth. If not then, then what will you, what will you give a conclusion? Then why do you think Lord God the Father gives you or shows you the preview of the heaven and the hell to think so that you could fear and live a moral life? <laughs> because people love to cook upon the myths and they say, because of such and such, you know, the way how the kids have been given a warning if they don't eat food, saying that this will happen, that will happen. The same thing you think, the Bible tells about the heaven and the hell and afterwards after you die, who has seen what will happen? <laughs> So you will say, let us enjoy this life, let us do this, let us do that. No, dear brethren, be careful. Because the word of Lord God is so great and unique and so specific to teach several times, several times, again and again. It goes on to teach. After death, there is a life. Either you will end up in the heaven or in the hell. If you have been completely blinded to the commandments of the word of Lord God, and if you think, if ever you wake up, if ever you're breathing, if ever you're having a consciousness that pricks your heart, if it is only the word of Lord God, what a great blessing you will have. Before your murmurings could come to the Lord God, wake up. What are your murmurings? You know, whenever you murmur, the word meant to say, whenever you pray, the word of your report which comes to God the Father whenever you pray. If your prayer doesn't have to be like Colossians 1, 9 through 12, or Ephesians 1, 17 to 19, or again Philippians 1, 8 through 12, if you don't have your prayer to make them to enlighten the spiritual life or to look back to become as disciples oriented life, then God the Father could easily tell, I have the report of you. The report which states to me, which teaches to me that you are murmuring. What murmuring? You are murmuring to be far away from discipleship program. You are murmuring that you don't want to live a life that which has been demanded by the word of Lord God. That's what he would say. Murmuring. And today people think they're not able to murmur. You know why you're murmuring whenever we ask you to become disciples? You may say, what is there in this world? Let's enjoy. You know, whatever you're enjoying, you're enjoying at the cost of the perishing souls. We have been given ample grace with ample mission, with ample power. At the same time, to be well prepared, to be in the chosen list. To be found in the book of life, to have your name resurrected in Christ. You have been given ample, you have been given much. But don't waste that valuable grace of Lord God in search of vanity, in search of stupid things. And as you're spending your time in search of stupid things and vanity or enjoying your life in vanity, just imagine, is it worthy because the souls are perishing? You should have been in the mission of preparing yourselves. You should have been in the mission of praying for the souls which are perishing. You should have been preparing for the things pertaining to the pallid wonders of Lord God's glory to be made known because we have so many great things because he said in Job 37, 5, God thundereth marvelously. 
has that lot many things for us to teach. You know what does he say over there? If you are not able to look upon the pale wonders of his glory to become his disciples. He says in Job chapter 37 in verse number 5. When Lord God the Father thundereth marvelously. The word Ra'em. It is nothing but he wants your head and your viewpoint of life and your blood. Not to be as per the thinking of this earth. But it has to be like a roaring thundering one because he said great things doeth he his things are gadol what does he want when he's establishing to get every thought like a disciple you are a christian so great things he builds up and then what does he do which we cannot get acquainted the great things which we get when we simply obey the voice of lord god rather than murmuring the physical eye cannot see the invisible thing. The things that which you are looking and thinking they're really great, he said they're temporal. But the things which your physical eyes cannot look, which we look by the eyes of faith, that th those things are permanent. But the physical eyes which you look, they are temporary. And they vanish. And the things which you cannot comprehend, as he says the word, emphasizing the earth, when you get every thought into captivity for Christ, you will be like the beloved Enoch. The Lord God the Father wants to keep you with him. And being in his presence, what a marvelous life we have. Spending our time in the presence of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, right now in the church age, so that you could be transformed or confirmed to the image of Christ, and you can spend your time in eternity in the presence of Lord God, the Father, every breath, every time. You know, what a marvelous wonder it would be. You know, what a marvelous great asset it would be. He says, you cannot comprehend that. You cannot imagine that. Therefore, Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians, the experience what he had in the third heaven. Those things are not been told for us now to tell you. We cannot declare them. You cannot comprehend even if it could be told. Therefore, he said it cannot be told because your physical bodies are not able to realize the importance of doxa. They're not able to realize the importance of resurrection power. They're not able to walk as per the demands of the word of Lord God. They're not able to realize that. If you would just imagine your real power in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, having an impact to the perishing world. You will really understand the true meaning of this life, not the meaning what the people can come and say, we have metaphysics, we have this, we have that, we have this. And you know, all the stupid things, it is just their brain, vain imagination. Just look into the conclusion of the whole matter, the end of whole matter. There could be no man greater in wisdom in this humanity than Solomon, but greater than Solomon is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now through the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, He has given us this word so that we can now look the conclusion of the whole matter. And what is the conclusion? The end. He says, dear brethren, what you have gone through in this life, gaining under pressure. So what is that whole matter? The bear meant to say the thing. First, he says, fear God all the days of this life. Fear, 3372. That's what he said. As long as I've been alive on this earth, don't fear God for the physical needs of this life or for the physical things of this life. But what for you need to fear God? So that you shall let go any promises of Lord God to be claimed or you shall let go from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun that the name of my Lord God shall be honored or you shall let go saying that the earth shall be filled with the glory of Lord God. Be careful. That's what you're, you're losing it out or That's what you're making not the people to bow down or to make every tongue to confess by your, by your walk of life. So that's what he said. Fear, fear, fear that. Fear such sort of a life. But today people are not able to fear. They're fearing for the standards of their life. They're fearing for the standards of their thinking. 
but he said fear God so that the name of my Lord God shall not be blasphemed on this earth don't give an occasion to the enemies of Lord God to say or to make fun on the name of such holy hallowed name of my Christ therefore he said fear God and then the second thing Shamer Shamer is dear brethren meant to say to absorb to God and you can make it up to be in a very critical examination you know the same thing what Daniel would do every day no matter what the 120 satraps who have been there above his head they pass a command in Daniel chapter 6 yet Daniel was been found not to alter the thing which he made and covenant with Lord God three times a day the same thing is doing he is going to kneel though the 120 satraps or the people who were rulers they wanted Daniel not to be a ruler over them they made a plan they made a trap yet he did not alter he was the same he absorbed the same because his thought process and his blood are thinking the same in his head you know these are three things which have your blood may say something you will tell your head is thinking something you may say and your thought process was something you may say you know your thought process you're getting something now to perceive something now need to perceive your head is already having a prejudiced mind and your blood is pumping that's what your heart would say do this or do that or don't do this or don't do that but here for Daniel what we look he though 120 satraps were against him he did not go to alter he did not go to change his regular schedule three times a day he knelt in the presence of Lord God the Father to prove the power of Lord God that is able to deliver them and he was able to deliver them while it was a very small thing for 10 days of trial why can't he deliver him now the 10 days we look in the first chapter now the sixth chapter is grown up so he knows the power so he did not go to altar and by that we meant to say what Shamer his thought process his blood and the things that are running in his head they all speak only one thing fear God obey his commandments fear God do his will fear God look into his word of look into his thoughts that's the word Shamer the word keep meant to say Shamer but today you have your thought process different your heart says something or your blood says something and your head does already occupied with prejudiced mind and fear so you're not able to walk in that path you're not able to look into that path so when you're not having that as the true fear of Lord God to operate in you then quite obviously what happens dear brethren you're going to end up in vanity and you don't realize that you're ending up in vanity so dear brethren he says look into the conclusion of the whole matter against all the trials and circumstances of this life now we come to give your sons or your daughters or your grandsons or your granddaughters the advice of this life now Solomon after going through such sort of a great trials in this life he said better be blinded in the word of God the word Sha'a be smeared up you know when everything is gone people will try to think we will build back once again you know yes God the Father is able to give you that strength again he will use you but if I've gone to the point of no return, like the way how Solomon goes to even to build the worshipping of idols homes, even in that he says, grace of God, because of the covenant which he made with his father David.
So the point, fear God. Fear God, he says now, fear God. Keep his commandments. Make sure that you're not able to give an occasion to the enemies of God to blasphemy the thinking of my Lord. So keep his commandments. The word mitzvah meant to say against any pressure. Build up the things pertaining to the all mankind thoughts. And this is the whole duty. The word is not duty. It is the end of all matter. And therefore here, what is the whole duty of mankind? He said, this is the fate. This is what we have been kept. This is the fate. This is what it has been destined for man. Not, it's not just the whole duty. Whole duty you find in the italics. It is wrong. It has to be this is the fate of man. People in India, they look about having a fate lines upon their forehead. As even great people would say again you know, in their books like Napoleon Hill. I am the master of my fate and the captain of my soul. So here, master of your fate. You know, what is the fate of man? The master of all the fates of man is Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the captain of our souls. It is not you. It is he. So in that master, what does he do? He said, this is the fate which I have written for you. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. And keep his commandments. And then he said, God shall bring every work into judgment, whether it is a secret one or the way how we were disciple, whether it was a good that which was agreeable or whether it was a distorted thinking. These are three things. The first one, secret thing, what it is, as disciples were grown up into grammar tears. As disciples, you are having your viewpoint of life. As disciples, you have done that which is the demand of the word of Lord God or not. As disciples, you led this life as per the thinking of Christ or not. This is the whole matter. Let us conclude, he said. And then that which is good, that which is agreeable. And then the other one, he said, that which is evil. That meant to say what your head had, that distorted thinking. Anything that which is against the word of Lord God, he calls, it's a distorted thinking. Therefore, dear brethren, God goes on to say in Job chapter 37, again in verse number 5, emphasizing the point if a man could go on to become the word of Lord God he thundereth marvelously with a voice what is the voice from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun become disciples that's the voice and then he said great things he had done so that we cannot comprehend simply obeying the word of Lord God becoming his disciples simply becoming the palate wonders of his word what a great blessings we have so the same thing over here in Psalm 119 in verse number 16 dear brother and he said I will blind myself that should be the translation I will blind myself in thy word I don't want anything else to look Though we have physical eyes, O oh Lord, let me be blinded to look upon the word of Lord God as my only way or the reason why I have my eyes. The reason why I have my ears to hear the word of God. That's what we are lacking today in our pulpit. We are not having that reasons. So if you would say, I will blind myself in the prescription demands, then I will not forget. What you will not forget, the word forget is shakak and the meaning of shakak in the pictographical representation dear brethren it emphasizes your thought process should be a disciple orientation into a grammatical level of thinking as a wall of fortification i will not forget thy word and the word over here what he says that getting every thought into captivity for christ if you have not been blinded, if you open up your eyes, it has to be the word of Lord God. That's what the word blinded meant to say. What is a great pleasure? It is not the pleasure of the delight of your eyes called to be the woman or XYZ. 
The pleasure is the word of Lord God. Being blinded in the word of Lord God is what your life is all about. And you cannot comprehend the blessing which God the Father has called for us to enjoy in this great and unique dispensation of the church age to be well ministered in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. So dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. So with our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In audible telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of His soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple, th believing upon the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that's the thing which you have as eternal life. Whereas for the believer, the greatest merit is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, where we teach learn to acquire the possession of the truth, the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest merit is to carry so thorn lagan, herald the word in season or of season, because the Dharma through my witnesses, where they have been called. The number one Dharma through my witnesses, in Wellingtonity, for the Bible in our hands. And number two Dharma through my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great and privilege it is, O Lord, to have fellowship with you through the word. We pray that Lord God the Holy Ghost to enlighten to challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.